Well, this is just a little video uh, in response to a request on how I made this do-it-yourself tone arm. It's a nine inch. And basically what I did was use a um, design guide that I found online and took a Gerard Lab 80, which is um, this right here. Great, great turntable. Love it, but the original arm was just bulky and looked really cheap and the automatic feature didn't work very well anymore, or didn't work at all. So I took all the automatic um, controls out of it and all the extra linkages that just weren't, weren't necessary. The only reason is just kind of reduce any kind of resonance or you know vibration, anything that just wasn't necessary. And I made this tone arm out of a carbon fiber aero shaft and some brass tubing, you can see here. And that's just to basically make a uh, splice or a joint in between the head shell that I, just a standard head shell that I bought, and the carbon fiber shaft. And I just laid it all out with AutoCAD and figured out, um, you know, the distances I needed based on where I was going to be mounting the um, central pivot and the spindle. And that all came from the um, online Gerard Lab 80 uh, template and some of the owner's manuals, they have some of the information there. What we have here is, I got this idea from Vinyl Engine. It's a computer hard drive main bearing, and they have really smooth smooth bearings in them. And uh, somebody had done this before, they'd taken a, the hard drive out and threaded it and glued a, a wooden tone arm on top of that. I thought a better idea would just be to use a gimbal, and this came from a Gerard GT25 that I just scrapped for parts. The gimbal um, has had a like a angular, well, the the bearing supports, and um, I just drilled those out, and then I ordered some of these bearings off of um, McMaster Car. Nothing special about them; they're just they're not the top of the line. I'm not sure what the highest grade bearings are, but they're maybe a step down from that. Uh, a little bit cheaper, and I think they work just fine. And they have a flange on them. It's a one eighth inch hole and I used uh, a brass eighth inch uh, rod cut it off to length and just um, that's what the tone arms pivoting on I drilled an eighth inch hole through the through the arrow shaft and stuck that in there and it just it's all force fit just kind of hold it nice in place there's a hole in the bottom of the gimbal that I put a screw in and that's just kind of glued in place um, there's a there's a divot or a little bit of a hole in the top of the main kind of a shaft, I guess, of the hard drive bearing. And I just put a screw down through there and uh, glued it in place with some super glue. Not the best idea. I'd like to have something that was mach that was uh, threaded, but um, I just didn't get around to that. The tone arm um, counterbalance weight is from the, the Gerard GT25 as well. And I drilled a little hole down here for the tone arm wires to come out of. And the back is actually a metric, just a carbon bolt that I had a machinist turn down the head of it so it would fit inside the carbon fiber arrow shaft. And the uh, brass piece, you see the hex, hex nut, is actually just an insert that I drilled out so that the um, bolt would go through it. And you don't see it very well, but there's a, a brass tube inside the counterweight because the uh, just to take up the room and have something nice to slide on and I put the um, brass insert inside that brass tube it just happened to fit perfectly and a nice little force fit there and I glued it in place too just to keep it in, in place and then that insert of course is a metric and it just uh, threads on to the bolt and then all you do to adjust the counterweight is just to twist that and keeps it in place and gives you some adjustability if you want to try a new head shell or something or a new cartridge. The cartridge is a Sure M91E Vintage. It's great. I love it. The needle's not in it right now but it sounds sounds just fine. And I can see that I got the... you probably can't see it but it's not perfectly level and I there's really no there's no uh, anti-skate weight right now I will have to add one of those because a 9-inch tone arm does need 
anti-skate. In fact, some people would argue that all tone arms need anti-skate, but uh, I had a 12 inch version of this. This is what I, I actually reduced the size of it, the length, and um, it really didn't need it before. It sounded great. And basically this uh, this flange here will mount into a new hole that I kind of I cut. Um, it was a very custom hole that had been there for the original tone arm, so I needed to cut it a little bit larger so it would fit. And that's about it. It's pretty basic. Uh, this is my first attempt, so I'm not, you know, I didn't have a, um, full, used a lot of parts that you can just get anywhere, and um, I'd love to, I'm sure over the years I will um, refine it and make new designs, but this is the first one, and it really sounds great. This is actually an improvement on the last one I had. I had some a little smaller hardware that I used, and this is a little bit beefier, a little more sturdy. I like that 